Namaste, and welcome to Soul Horoscopes Orbits Edition. From my webcam to yours, I'm Christopher Ray Manwatecki, your astrologer and soul biographer, here to help you put the pieces of your karmic story together this week. Well, the sun is in Leo, and we are chugging along in late Chapter 2 and hopping into Master Shui Chapter 3. We're focused on our heart chakra, our love, what we love about ourselves and others. So we're falling in love with ourselves this week, and we're moving into light casting our personal dreams. That is, being what we expect to come through the law of attraction. The moon starts in sensitive Libra on Sunday, Monday, then gets a little intense in Scorpio on Tuesday where we have to draw some emotional boundaries, then skips along in Jolly Sag Friday, Saturday, and on Sunday it will hit that T-square in Capricorn, so that's intense. The moon signs most affected are Libra Aries, Scorpio Taurus, Sag Gemini, and the Cancer Capricorn spectrum are particularly affected at the end of the week. Now looking at our orbits, man, and which of our chakras are most affected this week? Jupiter, of course, is doing some intensity there in the third chakra, causing a lot of stomach issues for people. The sun orbiting the heart chakra, so those with heart conditions better shape up right now. And the moon this week begins in the throat chakra, so there's a lot of communication in the beginning, and we move up through the nose and the sinuses to the third eye. So you'll have some psychic dreams by the end of the week, and those people who have migraine issues or issues with sinuses might have issues if you are ignoring your feelings, basically. That's how that all works. Looking at the planets, we still have this wondrous grand trine in water that's affecting us. This is going to continue. Now this is going to be most effective when the moon crosses over Saturn later in the week and that will cause an emotional trust issue to be changed and that will of course affect Neptune and Jupiter Lilith there at the bottom. That square, that infamous square is still in effect. Uranus and Pluto wreaking havoc but Uranus is the real strong part of it where you have to innovate your personal strength or character and this T-square, this is getting a lot of press, and this is where the moon is going to cross over Pluto at the end of the week and light this Christmas tree up, which means you'll have to kind of uh, change some emotional rules you have with yourself. Now, looking at a little bit of a close-up here, as the moon crosses Saturn, that's the moment later this week where you'll have to draw some new emotional boundaries with yourself, and Saturn's progressed to step six. That's the galactic center there it's crossing. And then the moon at the end of the week crosses Pluto, hitting that T-square, so we're going to have a lot of adjustment of our lives, of coming to a new settling as a result of the these two uh, moon planet crossings and just where the sun is with our heart. More on that, of course, when we go upstairs. In fact, let's do that now, shall we? Let's take the Ascension Elevator up and get a bird's eye view of you. Folks, this is your captain speaking. We realize you have a choice in the astrologers you choose to fly with, and we'd just like to thank you for flying with Christopher Watecki. <laughs> Hello Librans and Libra Risings and welcome to 33,000 feet for a bird's eye view of you. The sun is in Leo. We've got many orbits going on right now, but the primary orbit for Librans and Libra Risings deals with your social reputation. You're trying to connect to where you really feel your heart belongs and that is the real drama going on uh, in most of the Libra cases. But there's other orbits. You're also fighting to keep what's worth what you're worth and not give too much away. And with Uranus and Aries, there's a constant balance between home and family, career, and marriage issues. More importantly, marriage issues, the way you respond to yourself. So there's a lot of hectic energy going on. As we start this week, we move into Chapter 3 of Sun in Leo, in the end of the week, that is. We're in Chapter 2, I mean to say. And that is the part of the spectrum where you're really working on your title, your reputation in society, and your overall diplomacy or not. By the end of the week, you'll be stepping into Master Shui, and that means you're working to do something with that title. So what do you do with it? The innovation, the ascension, and trying to reach utopia, which is what everyone's trying to do right there uh, in that third chapter of the 11th house, as we say. Now, the planets go from step 18 to step 25. That's the sun, anyway. So you're taking action in the world 
at the beginning of the week, and by the end of the week, you're taking a spiritual squat and making sure you're okay. Spiritual squat, by the way, just kind of taking a time out. Mercury does join the party in Leo. You'll have some sort of a breakthrough idea, maybe Sunday, Monday, and then you will run for it all week long. By the end of the week, you are still making lists of things you want to do. Mars is still being aggressive in the house of career. So you're going to take action in your career and be holding space that everything's all right. And Jupiter says the career collapse or the bad decisions are over. Now you're loving and trusting nothing else will go wrong. And you start to heal career path or decision issues by the end of the week. Now when it comes to soul capital and self-esteem, Saturn moves to step six this week. That means you need to love and trust and keep things in balance and harmony. That is, don't give too much away, don't take too much, and also uh, don't fall into a negative thinking when it comes to what you're capable of, self-esteem issues. So Saturn will be tough on you if you don't, uh, uh, if you aren't tough on yourself, and that's kind of the way Saturn works. It's tough no matter what. Might as well just go ahead and do the work for Saturn, right? So that said, taking a look at last week, the real turning point was like cast day. It was a breakdown, breakthrough, and you might have had an issue in society, a faux pas, something not go what you the way you wanted. By the end of the week, you were holding space and trusting everything would be okay. This week, even though it's a Sunday, action is the ruling part of the day. So whether it's in church handing out leaflets or something, you're out doing some sort of social event on Sunday. Jupiter says you want to love and trust that everything with the career is okay. So you don't want to touch it till it's broke. Do not touch your decisions or career issues all week long. You're loving and trusting. And Neptune at retrograde four degrees still says spiritual miracles. As I laid out in the act two videos and also the Jupiter and Cancer video, how this is all spiritual miracle time and where you should be praying and staying in the moment. Now, as we start the week, you take action on Sunday. On Monday, emotions get paranoid about self-confidence or self-esteem as the moon moves into Scorpio and you're forced to step up and be tough for yourself. That also strikes the grand trine, that soul pyramid. And so you are, you know, it's about soul capital. Uh, it's also, uh, and it stretches over uh, to your uh, personal boundaries and the way you draw lines uh, with your own belief structure or not, okay? So it's, it's a real uh, shift with this grand trine to hold your own boundaries in place at the, at the core of it and at the same time not slip in uh, into old belief patterns and listen to your intuition in the moment. That's the whole big thing of the grand trine. So that is all Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday is a cloudy day. The moon moves into Sagittarius. For you, emotions get very pensive and you might go into your head on Wednesday. You might do a lot of talking to friends or reaching out. And then Thursday is the quantum day. This is the quantum breakthrough day. Now there's Uranus happening on three levels on Thursday. On the one hand, spiritual miracles, so stay spiritual in the moment with your lifestyle and with boundaries and beliefs. Uh, secondly, Mercury at 13 degrees. You might receive some bad news or something go wrong with a friend or a group organization or some political issue that lights up. But if you go with the flow, especially being intuitive in the moment with that soul pyramid, if you go with the flow emotionally, uh, you might find that you land on your feet in a big, profound way. Now, you may not know on Thursday, but you'll know probably Friday by the end of work. So some real interesting politics going on Thursday. That's the, all the lightning bolts going on there. Then this weekend, some very good news. Uh, for one, the Venus, your home planet, moves into Libra, your sign. This comes out of the cloud, so it goes from lucid dreaming to, to a beauty cycle. So you're going to want to feel beautiful and restore balance. Your ego will also come to peace. If you've had a lot of anger issues with work and career, you'll probably find that they come to some peace on Saturday. Then taking a sneak peek at next week, the real pivot point is the full moon, which will happen and pull on society versus inner child. So that's a real hardship there. And that... Uh, uh, also on Sunday, I should say, the moon does cross over Pluto, so your heart might have to let go of something at home family, and that whole uh, you know, um, T-square gets struck between marriage, career, and home. That's Sunday. So Sunday and Tuesday, Wednesday are the real tough days next week. Now, grounding on Earth, I want to invite you to come on down and be a part of my studio audience for Guided Hangouts Practical Wizardry. That is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. You are welcome to come and watch them, help people step in their magic, and people are telling me it's fabulous. I'm loving watching myself, to be honest with you. If you can't make it, I do re-release the episode on The Mothership, and it's worth watching. They'll teach you how to step in your magic. Also, I'm bringing back one of my favorite seminars. In 90 minutes, I'll help you jump into your heart, kickstart the heart, jumpstart the heart, however you want to say it. $34.95, and it's only 90 minutes. I'm going to do it for a few different Sundays. Come on down to soulmart.me and check out the schedule for that. And I am bringing back Lightcast Boot Camp right after Labor Day on Sundays for six weeks. This 
is how I teach people like the fundamentals of astrology, the fundamentals of manifestation, the fundamentals of light casting in six weeks. And we always start off with something we're going to manifest. 80% of the class manifests what they set out to manifest. So if you want to know about more, that'll be at soulmart.me. And you got just two more weeks to get a serious joy reading with me for $99.99. This is an hour on webcam. It's recorded on MP3. And now with my new digital booking system, you can get a reading as soon as tomorrow sometime. So I'm loving it. All these are available at soulmart.me. All right, Libra and Libra Risings, thank you so much for your time and your patronage. I will see you in seven days with more. Stay in your heart and live, love, be.